welcome back guys we are in the throes of summer here in virginia it's been warm it's been really warm we've been up to a lot of stuff so so far we've canned some peach jam we've done a ton of pickles we're working on our tomatoes next and i've froze a bunch of our squash we were gifted some zucchini, so I made this, some zucchini bread. And we're just looking forward to anything else we get out of the garden. We've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on on the counter right now. Levi's working on part of dinner. I'm working on the other half of it. We've got a lot of squash from the garden this past week that we've got to do something with. And he's working on a pork roast. Uh, pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. There we go. I'm gonna smoke him on the grill, and we may just slice it you know, like that, or I'll do I'll shred it and make like a a pulled pork out of it. It's just easy. It's boneless already. So I'm getting the season up here using. Red bean is real salt. Chef's blend, smoked salt. Um, and then I do it on the pellet grill to give it even more smoke, smoke flavor. We like that. <laughs> and this morning we went to our one of the local farmers markets in Charlesburg, and we got some fresh peaches. And we're gonna make some homemade peach ice cream for dessert. So I've got water, sugar, salt, and vinegar boil, bring come into a boil on the stove, and that's gonna be our brine. So whether you do spears or sliced cucumber in your clean mm -hmm. jars, while that brine is coming to a boil, you can go ahead and fill your jars up. You don't wanna go too heavy on your jars because you want that liquid, your liquid brine to come up over top of your actual sliced cucumber or your spear cucumber. So like here, I had a couple that were too long, so I had to cut them in half. So, like this guy right here, I can shovel on down in there. That way that brine stays up over top. You gotta have the brine up over top of your cucumber to make sure that you're getting all the flavor and everything. All your brine seals in there correctly. So like this guy right here would not work, obviously. So we're gonna have to cut them in half. So the pickles we did this go around were dill. And we did two different recipes. We canned some and then we just did like fermented ones in the fridge, um, which we've literally already eaten. We did a half gallon of those. But they're really fun to make. And it's funny because Mila was like, why did you put grass in there? Like asking about the dill. And it's just really cool um, seeing all the different spices and stuff that go into preserving foods and how it changes the flavors. And yeah, it's just fun. It's fun making it. And this is what the brine looks like before it comes to a boil. while we're waiting for the brine to finish getting up to boiling. I got the dill down into the pickles, well, into the cucumbers. So having a, having a funnel definitely comes in handy.
working on peach jam now. We're bringing it up to boil. And then we just stir and stir and stir until we get it to the consistency that we want it. Just to be clear, we skipped a little bit on the sugar on the peach jam, and that was all my fault. Um, I'm trying to get a little bit less sugar, just in general, but what we ended up having to do is pull out our pectin. We always keep a little bit of pectin, pectin here. Pulled out the pectin, we did maybe a quarter of a box of pectin just to add it to it just to make this a little bit thicker so it's not quite as runny it's still runny but we're gonna let that pectin cook in now and the berries over here they're doing just fine we did a mixture of honey and sugar in this one so um it's the pectin's cooking out of it pretty good i can i can see the thickness coming and we still got over 10 minutes of cooking still left to do there so to use up our squash, I put the attachment to my KitchenAid mixer on that is a grater and we diced up the squash and zucchini and we grated them and then we weighed them out, put them into quart sized bags and then I just freeze them so that they're ready to go whenever I want to make squash casserole or just add them to any dishes in the future. So had a little bit of an issue with the deer in our pumpkin field. And like I've said before, but we try our best not to use any sort of like insecticide, herbicides, anything of that nature. So we tried the Irish Spring soap around our pumpkin patch because it's roughly an acre. So like it's doable and it worked for a little bit, but then we'd get big gushing rainstorms and the soap wouldn't be so strong anymore and we noticed the deer were going down the outskirts of the field and just gnawing down the pumpkins so we also made some bone sauce which we've heard really cool things about and actually my dad he kind of gets into like the whole permaculture thing and he'll send me random videos and he was like you got to try this bone sauce like this is so cool so we did we tried it and I'll play the footage here in a second. But um, yeah, lots of craziness going on in the middle of summer. This evening, we're working on making some bone sauce. Levi's working on digging the hole where the bottom pot will go into. And it'll go flush with the top of the ground there. Harpy and I are eating our last bit of blueberries. Hey guys, so as Sarah mentioned, we are doing some bone sauce today, ain't we Harpy? So the bone sauce is just bones from, it's, it's better if you get bones from multiple animals. So today we're gonna have pork, um, beef and chicken bones and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we got a one pot buried so stainless steel pot buried we're gonna do a wire mesh screen put the bones on top of that put this pot on top of there and what we're doing now is she's wetting the, the soil here we got a good bit of clay in our soil so we're gonna take clay and put around the seal of the pot and we'll put and those bones will be on top of that wire mesh up off the bottom we'll build this fire around the pots and we're gonna let this thing this fire burn for a couple hours and then come back later this evening we'll put the fire out we'll let everything cool down and then we'll get the the bottom pot and that liquid that comes down off that bottom pot that's the bone sauce that's the good stuff all the oils coming out of the bones and it smells like a charred animal if you can imagine that it's just awful awful smell but 
that awful smell is what's going to keep the rabbits and the deer out of your garden. You guys getting the fire started on the bone sauce. Thought I'd pick some cucumbers with y'all. We got a few ready today. He's checking on the tomatoes. I don't know where you guys are from, but it is a hot one today. And it's going to be hot again tomorrow, too. They've got this one variety. I think it's the market more or the Boston pickling I can't remember but they're supposed to pick them when they're smaller because if not they turn really fast I gotta remember where my pile is but they're somewhere those we're just gonna save for seeds or feed them to the chickens Like an Easter egg hunt. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you eating Mama's tomatoes? They probably don't taste very good. They probably don't taste very good. Don't eat my tomatoes. I got the fire going and the trick is to get it really really hot and sealed off clay and mud around the, the seam where both pots meet to make sure no air gets into there so Levi's got the fire going pretty hot How long do you think we ought to let it burn like that? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to trying to think. I may do some quick research and find out. But it is hot. And it is hot outside. <laughs> so it's doubly hot. So we just went and ate dinner. Came back out to check on it. Look for dinner. Stay back, please. Uh, stay back, baby.
disgusting. I think a little bit of our mud got down in it, but. So do you want to tell them why we're making this? So the deer have been ravaging our pumpkins, our green beans, and we just got too big of an area that we can't fence it all in. It doesn't make a lot of like economical sense for us right now to fence it in. We don't have all the money and what we do have is we have a lot of bones from animals that we've raised and butchered and all that bone left over. We're putting it to good use here with this bone sauce. This is gonna help keep rabbits and deer, basically your herbivores, out of your garden. Due Even to the stench. Due to the stench, yeah. This is just charred bone, essentially. And all the oils that come off of it. And we're painting on these posts, and we're gonna paint on these, these T posts too, and we're gonna put them out in, in our big garden and we should keep the deer out of there and we're also going to paint some on our apple trees help keep them out of there it's safe it's uh, non-toxic it is organic it is like the best way organically to keep deer out so that was our first time doing bone sauce and so far fingers crossed we haven't had the deer come into the pumpkin patch so I would say it works pretty well. And the last thing that we've been working on has been our food forest. Um, this is one of the most exciting bits of our property that we really want to make immersive, I guess is the adjective I want to use. Um, we just bought some grapevines that we're going to add to it. And Levi planted his comfrey, which I'll show you in just a second. And yeah, we just have really big hopes for the food forest. All right, what do you think? Carrying some mulch down to the apple tree. I'll put some compost around it a little bit, a little bit earlier. So you can see here, this is uh, step one to the food forest project. Compost, there's about four to five inches of compost there. We're just gonna cover it up with mulch. And that's just gonna give it a head start into breaking down. Do another two inches of mulch and good to go. The cats think they're getting cat food or something. They hear the crinkly bag. Biscuit. Yeah, those are our two farm cats. That's Biscuit, a.k.a. Biscante, Biscaloo. Whatever uh, bisque name Mama wants to come up with today. And that's Rango, Rangi Poo, Rangaloo, Levi's BFF. She follows me around. <laughs> and then that's Ellie. Rango earns her keep, Ellie. Not so much. <laughs> um, so, we're here just planting some comfrey around the apple trees today. I took, um, it's probably two cubic yards of compost and put down. It's probably three or four inches thick. That is for the weed suppression and then we're mulching it, which we've got half mulched and half not mulched yet, but we'll, we'll get to that point, but we gotta get this comfrey in the ground. You can see these comfrey roots are already starting to sprout off, so that's a good thing we're gonna put probably four comfrey plants around each apple tree. We also moved our chickens. I didn't get any footage from that, but this is their third rotation since we've been here. And we have two Premier One poultry nets up. So we connect them. One's I think 160 feet and the other one's 100. I don't know, don't quote me. But we almost have 300 linear feet that we obviously make into a, a circle or oval. And we moved them yesterday evening to the herb garden that's here. Um, very overgrown, lots of weeds and stuff. And the one evening Levi was like, 
what if we just move them there next? Just let them tear it out so that way I don't have to worry about going in and weed eating it. And I was like, hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> so we moved them there yesterday evening and they really are loving it. They're loving life. But thank you guys for following along. Uh, we just wanted to kind of catch you up on some of the stuff we've been doing. Uh, it's been pretty busy. And I think that's the same for a lot of farmers and homesteaders and gardeners and just, it's that season of life where it's really busy and crazy and chaotic. But uh, thank you guys for following along and we'll keep you updated as, you know, it gets a little less crazy. But um, we're definitely looking forward to October and pumpkin picking time. So, We'll keep you in the loop, but thanks again.